one. Yeah. Cheap one, really cheap. Plastic. So are they gonna go up in price after a bit too? Of course, that's how I do my make my money. Prince Nazim Hamad, um, Amir King Khan, there's a lot of guys who've used that as a moniker and it's really worked for them. Um, how did you come up with it? It's my name. Amir means prince in Arabic and I was uh, uh, named after a prince. So that's where the prince comes from. Do you feel like you're going to lead when you fight? You're, you're a warrior leading a nation. Do yes. you feel like that? You seem to yes, have that, that energy about you. Yeah, that is what I want to do. That's why I started doing this. And I want to just give the opportunity to everyone who think they can't make it to make it because I came from nothing and made it into something. So that's who I want to show people. In just talking about the fight, it's a pretty uh, slick uh, finish there. Can you just talk us through the final moments before, uh, before you snap from that redneck choke? Yes, I do my work in the gym. You know, I have great coaches from London Shoe. They saw the opening, told me, and I just reacted. And that's what, was hap what happened. You're part of this new generation of fighters that are really kind of almost reinvigorating the London Shoe Fighters gym. Uh, what, what, what's going on in the gym at the moment? And do you have the kind of a new influx of fighters that are now coming because of guys like you, guys like MVP and things like that? We have great fighters in all ages, especially a lot of young up-and-comers like me, like Javed Bashra, Farid Bashra. It's a lot of young talent coming up with different skills than the old fighters who have like a stand-up background or just a ground background. They're just good everywhere and I think most importantly is the atmosphere in the gym and on the shoot that makes us win and get us where, where we are getting. But your, your life, excuse me, your, your life's been a bit of a fight though, hasn't it? I mean, this incredible story that you were just about to start talking about there, that, you know, the escape from Iraq, the the, the fleeing to Sweden. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us the story. I was born in uh, Iraq, Baghdad, and during the war and everything, and we had to flee the country. I just woke up one night, we packed our bags and left to Syria, where I was for one and a half year, moving again to Kurdistan. From there, as a young kid, I didn't have any idea, we moved to Sweden at the age of eight. So I grew up there, and everyone who moved to a new country knows the struggles, don't know the language, no friends, nothing. So I got into a lot of trouble because I couldn't speak, people made fun of me and I didn't like to back down. So I found MMA. So I started doing that and after five, six years I wanted, I felt that a lot of people wanted to see me succeed. So I decided to move to London, to London Shoot Fighters and give them my all. Was there religious persecution against you in Iraq and in your community? Like a lot of political issues down there with my family so we had to leave the country. Were people murdered? Were people murdered in your family? A lot of people murdered, prison, trouble. Everyone knows about Iraq and the troubles there. And do you feel like you're carrying that? My last question. Uh, do you feel like you're carrying that as a fighter? Of course. I remember it every before every fight. That is what I have in my mind. And you can see there in the fight. I don't fight only with my hands. I fight with my heart. One of your teammates, Michael Page, was saying before the fight that you were hoping to put on a performance that was going to get you and earn you a better tour contract. Do, do you think you did? You know, do you think you had the performance that was going to do that for you tonight? I'm always looking to perform my best, and to be honest, last last year exactly in May, I was competing in this arena in Bellator, and I didn't manage to finish the fight. And straight after, I told my coaches just walking out. I was pissed off that I didn't finish the fight, so I wanted to come in with to this fight and get a finish. How and that's why I did. How much does this mean to you? You can see on your face that this is like, this is really important to you. Yeah, I don't only fight for myself, you know, I fight for a legacy, everyone, all immigrants out there, you know, all the people who have nothing. And that's why I go in with such a ferocity. There's not many flyaways to have a record like yours right now in the world, so where do you think this puts you in the division? Whoever they want to put me in front of me, I'm ready. I'm always ready. So I don't really, I don't look up my opponents or have a certain opponent in mind. I do me and if it's if it's my day, it's my day. And how you gonna break plan? Just with some Nando's and some rest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Nando's birthday cake. <laughs>